Well, bless God, we want to welcome you all to the online church. This is Pastor Leroy Carter and uh, from Lithonia, Georgia. It's a joy, an honor, and a pleasure to represent the Lord in this office and to present to you the online church where we worship God in spirit and in truth. You know, you may say, well, what is the online church? Well, the online church, we're part of the church. We are part of the church. We just uh, come online so that we can reach people who don't ordinarily attend church or people who don't have a church to attend or people who have dropped out of the church or people who are in transit, uh, people who are moving from place to place, people who have not settled down into a church community where they are. We also thank God that we can reach out to the sick, the shut-ins, the, the, the homeless, uh, those who are incarcerated. That's what the online church is all about. And the purpose is to bring Christ Jesus to you. We present Jesus Christ crucified, buried, resurrected from the dead. And we preach the word of God. That's what the online church is all about. It's no split from the church. It's no division. There's no schism. We are part of the church, and we're using technology as God has given us the ability to do so, to reach out to places where the brick-and-mortar church cannot go. And so once we partner together and realize what our purpose is, we can do great things for Jesus Christ and help get more people saved, more people worshiping God, more people studying the Word of God. That's what the online church is all about. So we welcome you. We welcome all of our friends who are tuning in in other nations. Bishop Elijah in Kenya, we worship you. Uh, we bless you and thank God that you've chosen to worship with us. No, we don't worship you. We bless you and we thank you for coming here to worship with us. We thank you for the great work God is leading you to do in Kenya. We reach out to our friends in Europe and in uh, the Caribbean and parts of America. We just thank God. Well, bless God. We're going to uh, have a real treat these next couple of weeks. In the next two weeks, we're going to talk about idolatry in the church. Idolatry in the church. Uh, hey, a lot of people are going to have their eyes open. A lot of uh, people in the body of Christ are going to have their eyes open. You know, God does not want us living in idolatry. And so we're going to look at idolatry in the church. And if you find yourself uh, involved in idolatry in any way, just say, ouch, ouch, and then say, Lord, forgive me. Then get away from it. I've had to do that even in preparing these sermons. I've had to say, oh, Lord, forgive me. So we're going to ask our friend, up in Marysville, Pennsylvania. His name is Ryan Trugler, and Ryan is a prayer warrior. We're going to ask him to lead us in prayer. Uh, good morning, Game Pastor. Good morning, Church. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins and sending into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father to, for interceding for all mankind. <clears throat> we want to thank you for defeating death and the grave as well. Lord, we just want to thank you for giving uh, Pastor Carter the, the knowledge and the wisdom and the courage to come on here in this online ministry and give us your word again today. And we want to bless this online ministry. And also we, we want to bless all the, our, our troops and, and the great nation of America, the great nation of Israel as well, and everyone around the world that's, that's in Christ and is trying to come to you, Lord. And we just want to raise up uh, and edify all the, all the pastors and the churches and we just want to bless them, Lord. And we just want to give you thanks for everything that you're doing for us. And we do that. We come to you in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate you and appreciate your family. And thank you for leading us in prayer. Uh, brothers and sisters, I want you to turn in your Bibles <coughs> at this time to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's uh, look at some scriptures, some verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Then we're going to hear a song by maybe a song or two, one song by Ryan, by um, uh, Kevin Wilson. And then we're going to have a great message as we continue in our worship service as we present Jesus Christ as Lord. 
So download um, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 or open your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And we want to look at verses 1 through 14. I'd like to read these verses uh, today. Praise God. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. We're talking about the Israelites coming out of Israel going through the wilderness. But with many of them God was not well pleased. Listen to this. But with many of them God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples. To the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. That's a good word. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. That's a message for all of us. I'm going to read that again. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may bear it. Let me read that verse again. Powerful verse. Therefore, have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. And we finish our reading with verse 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Flee from idolatry. We're going to <coughs> take a look in the next couple of weeks at idolatry and why God hates idolatry. And you're going to find yourself uh, in areas in your life where you know, you've been close to idolatry or even involved in idolatry. So stick with us for the next couple of weeks and let this word enlighten you as it's enlightening me. And when God reveals his word, repent and get away from it. We don't want anything separating us from the Lord Jesus Christ. Jackie Fisher usually reads our scripture for us, but she's on the road traveling today. Jackie, we pray that you'll have traveling grace you and your family, and before our message, which is um, entitled Idolatry in the Church, Idolatry in the Church, Part 1, Idolatry in the Church, we're going to hear another song. Let's hear another song by our friend, our friend Kevin Wilson. Kevin's from Kentucky. He's given us permission.
Praise God, that's Kevin Wilson, our friend Kevin Wilson, through Jesus. He's the only way to God, through Jesus, Kevin says. And that's what the Bible says. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Hallelujah. And God is serious about that, ladies and gentlemen. He is very serious that the only way to God is through Jesus. So, Pay heed, pay heed to that, and give God the glory, the honor, and praise that he is due. All praise goes to God. Hallelujah. Well, welcome again to the online church. We're going to look at idolatry in the church today. You're going to be surprised. You're going to be amazed at the idolatry in the church and why the church needs to clean up her act. When we say church, we're talking about you and me. And believers, ladies and gentlemen, when I use the term church, we're not talking about <coughs> we're not talking about all the people who attend a bu a building or attend a fellowship or even come online for the online meetings. We're talking about the members of the body of Christ. When I read First uh, Corinthians chapter ten, the second word in that first verse is brethren meaning believers. Moreover, believers, I would not that ye should be ignorant. So God does not want us to be ignorant. Verse 14 says, Wherefore, my beloved, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. That's a message to the church. That's a message to the born again. That's a message to believers. Flee idolatry. So we're going to take a good look at idolatry in the next couple of weeks. And I pray that after these uh, messages are over, you are edified, you are built up. The Word will build you up. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Uh, the Scripture says that 
uh, the word of God is given for correction, for, uh, for doctrine, for instruction in righteousness. And sometimes the, the word has to correct us because we can be going smoothly down uh, I-76, Ryan. We can be going smoothly uh, down the Pennsylvania Turnpike and not realize that we're going in the wrong direction. I don't know about you, but I've often driven uh, and and find myself going several miles out of the way because I was going in the wrong direction. And so the Word of God helps the church to make sure we're in the right direction. Bible students are familiar with the problem of idolatry with Old Testament Israel. I mean, when you read the Old Testament, you see idolatry all over the place. From the golden calves at Dan and Bethel to the groves, the high places, the host of heaven, and Baal worship, idolatry was the dominant sin of ancient Israel and uh, Judah. You ought to read uh, uh, 1 Kings. First Kings, I think it's 17, about Elijah on Mount Carmel. That was a big contest between the idols and God. Second Kings 17 summarizes these, these sins. The kings of Israel and Judah, with few exceptions, the kings of Israel and Judah, they led God's people astray into idolatry. Of the 20 kings in the northern kingdom, we're talking about the, when the kingdom split under, um, after, after David died and, and his son Solomon took over, the northern kingdom divided after, after the death of Solomon and the northern kingdom became the kingdom of the 10 tribes and of the 20 kings that served that nation, all of them were corrupt. Uh, all of them were corrupt. And in Judah, the southern kingdom, most of those king, king, kings were corrupt. And so we in America, we need to pay heed. Ladies and gentlemen, we're at the most critical time in, the, in our nation's history where uh, people, uh, many call themselves evangelicals, conservative Christians, believers, church members, are so divided politically and uh, it's, 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 it's at the point now, ladies and gentlemen, where you need to get into your Bible, not get into the political rhetoric, not read somebody's speeches, not reading somebody's deposition. You need to read the Bible for yourself because a lot of people in America are being led astray. Uh, a lot of people have chosen. I mean, America is an idolatrous nation, ladies and gentlemen, an idolatrous nation. America has, uh, uh, almost half of America has chosen that the Republican Party is their God. Almost half of the American people have chosen that the Democratic Party is their God. They would do whatever their political leaders say. And, and ladies and gentlemen, many Americans are going down the tube because they won't read the Word of God. And the sad part is many Christian leaders, many Christian leaders are, are so into politics and so into following this person or that person that they no longer follow the Word of God. I'm going to tell it like it is. Many pastors no longer follow the word of God and teach what God says in his word, but they are leading people politically. Many of the uh, pastors have been bought out, have been uh, purchased by these political leaders. Uh, the political leaders have them in their pockets, and, and, and churches are prospering and thriving, especially the mega churches, and, and they are politically aligned with, with whoever gives them the most, and it's a sin and a shame. And the sad thing is, that people are being deceived because most Christians, let's face it, let's face it, hey, Wes, most people, most Christians don't read their Bible. They would rather listen to their favorite preacher. And then it's, if you're not careful, your pastor can be an idol. Your preacher can be an idol. I know people who will travel all over the nation following pastor so-and-so or prophet so-and-so or bishop so-and-so, wherever he or she goes, they go, 
and that's their God. And whatever comes out of that pastor's mouth is what the people believe. And if that pastor is not being led by the Holy Spirit, hey, every preacher is not spirit-filled. Every preacher is not being led by the Spirit of God. And so we're looking at America in bad shape. And if America's in this kind of shape, what kind of shape is the world in? And so, uh, and so this message for the next couple of weeks, we're looking at idolatry in the church. We're looking at idolatry. We're looking at Christians who practice idol worship. Practice idol worship. Well, if you don't think Christians practice idol worship, then uh, you turn on, turn on your TV later on today and see how many Christians are at football games, how many people did not go to church this morning, they're at a football game, how many people are <coughs> spent the night in the parking lot waiting for the tailgate party to begin and, and neglect God. Oh, they'll pick God up later on after the game is over. Uh, you look at the number of Christians have on their black and yellow uh, uh, sweaters or jerseys. They've got their red and black jerseys on down here in Atlanta. Uh, they've got their green and white on west up in Philadelphia. Uh, they've got their uh, blue and white up in Boston. And, and and these people are adamant. They are serious about their teams. And many of these teams are idols. People spend more money buying paraphernalia about their many they spend more money uh, buying paraphernalia uh, concerning their team than they give to God. And so we're looking at idol worship in the church, ladies and gentlemen. What about New Testament times? Was idolatry a dominant sin in the first century church? Is idolatry a major factor in the church of God today? When we read, I read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and that 14th verse says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Paul is writing to the church at Corinth, the most idolatrous church ever to stand on the face of the earth. The Corinthians were idol worshipers, ladies and gentlemen. They had idols. They had idols to everything. Uh, they even had a, a, an idol to an unknown God. Uh, they worship everything and all kinds of idols. And even in the church, they brought that into the church. Many accepted Jesus, got saved, but they brought their idols, their icons, their their figurines, their figures into the church, and the church was a mess. And Paul had to straighten it up through the gospel. The word idol in English is derived from the Greek word edo, which, is, which means that which is seen or known. And that's, thus we get the word idol or edo. Um, Webster defines idolatry as worship or immoderate respect of love or love of a physical object as a god. It's worship or immoderate respect or love of a physical object as a god. Or the giving of absolute religious devotion and ultimate trust to something that is not God. Ladies and gentlemen, in America, in America there are many, many people, and I'm talking about Christians, <clears throat> who have given absolute religious devotion to the Republican Party, absolute religious devotion to the Democratic Party. And many of these church folks who are so-called born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, they will kill you. If you're a Democrat and they're Republican, or you're a Republican and they're a Democrat, they will cause you harm. That's, that's the extent of idolatry in America today. And ladies and gentlemen, it just grieved my heart. As I was listening to one of my favorite pastors, who's a great teacher, one of my favorite pastors on uh, TV the other day, uh, three days ago, and, and uh, he's a good teacher. He has taught many people, millions of people in America and, and throughout the nations. And to hear him stand up and say that he was going to vote for a certain person no matter what, Come election time next year, he's voting for him absolutely. And here's a man who, like many evangelicals, many Christian leaders, many Christians, have you know, are so devoted, 
so uh, uh, loyal to a certain leader in Washington, D.C., that no matter what comes out of that person's mouth, uh, whether it's corrupt or incorrupt, people believe it. Now, it bugs me, Ryan. It bugs me, people. It, it just tears me up to, to, to uh, question how can so-called born-again, spirit-filled, Bible-believing preachers and teachers and members of the body of Christ, how can people accept a person who is a liar, a whoremonger, uh, 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 he's corrupt, he's a racist, he hates people, he spews hatred, he texts, uh, texts hatred every day, he's a bully, he pushes people around. How can, how can Christians worship a person like this and, and, and neglect God? And yet these so-called Christians call themselves Christians, call themselves believers, and, 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 and will shoot you down like a dog if you don't agree with what uh, uh, this leader is saying. And so, yes, Ryan, we should be devoted and loyal to God and to God only. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to the, in the next couple of weeks, take a look at idolatry in America. God's going to pull your coat. He's going to open your eyes. He's opening my eyes. Many of us are going to have to repent, those of you in other nations, those of you who are listening to the, the recordings, and many of my friends who uh, watch on uh, the YouTube recordings or the Facebook recordings or on our website, you're going to listen to these messages, and don't shoot the messenger. I'm a preacher. I preach it as God gives it to me. But I'm the, I'm the first one who has to repent when God gives me these messages. And so we're going to look at idolatry. We're going to look at how, how, how awesome idolatry has taken over this nation. Idolatry is a demonic spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14 says, Flee from idolatry. Flee from it. Flee. Run from idolatry. Verses 15 through 33, and we didn't read that for in 1 Corinthians 10, shows us why we must flee idolatry. We cannot have fellowship with demons. We cannot partake of false Passover services. We are no, we're not stronger than God, but we must forsake the company of those who are idol worshipers. And ladies and gentlemen, many Christians today are associating with idol worshipers. Many Christians are associating with politicians who are idol worshipers. Anybody who worships something or someone uh, in place of God is an idol worshiper. And this nation is, is, is putrid with politicians who worship themselves. Uh, they care less about God. Oh, they know when to say, God bless America. And they know when to say, let's make America great again. <clears throat> they know when to try to be religious, but ladies and gentlemen, when you look at what's in their hearts, it is, it, it is, it's an abomination. But yet, ladies and gentlemen, Christians have been deceived. We're living in an area, era of deception. I was watching a report last night on uh, words by Nixon about Nixon and what Nixon said, and 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 forty some years ago uh, during the Watergate era, all uh, the things that came out of Richard Nixon's l l mouth and the way he talked about people, the way he talked about Jews, the way he talked about blacks, the way he talked about his enemies, the way he tried to cover up uh, 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 his 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 his. Uh, his actions and the way he blasphemed God in his, in his speeches and in his private life and on his phone calls. And yet people, people revered Richard Nixon. And the same thing is happening today, ladies and gentlemen. People revere uh, 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 what we have in the White House. They revere that person and, and, and they're afraid of him. And, and it just bugs me the number of preachers who are punks who are afraid to stand up on the word of God, they would rather compromise and compromise uh, with a tyrant than to stand on the word of God and preach the truth of God's word. And so it, it just tore me up to hear one of my favorite preachers say, uh, uh, and he's good preacher now, he's a good preacher. And, 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 and yet, yet 
it, these preachers, these pastors, members of the body of Christ, uh, believe that there's a real separation between uh, church life and political life, church life and everyday life. No, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says you shall know them by their fruits. We're to live for Jesus every day, all the day of our lives. Jesus should be first in our lives. We should not compartmentalize Jesus. You know, go to church on Sunday, act religious, then Monday through Saturday, act any old way. But we find preachers compromising. We find the body of Christ compromising. And we find people with all kinds of idols. We're going to look at idols, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to look at, you know, I love football. I love me some football now. And I've got some favorite teams. But those teams are not to be my idols. Those teams are not to come between me and God. The barbecue is not supposed to come between me and God. The tailgate uh, party is not supposed to come between me and God. The picnic, the company picnic, the parade is not supposed to come between it's not supposed to come between me and God. I, I love movies. There are, there are some people, uh, uh, I like to see them in their roles as actors, but they are not idols. I love singers, they, but there are some singers who are they're not to be idols, but people worship these singers. They worship these politicians. They worship these athletes. They worship these stars. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to correct because many of these people and things are coming between us and God. And then, ladies and gentlemen, there are many marriages in which people need to check their marriage. I mean, some of these spouses mean more to people than God means to them. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to get these things in perspective. And, 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 and this word is a word of warning. It's a word of correction. It's a word of instruction so that none of us shall perish. Israel perished in the wilderness because they did not believe God. They put snakes and they put bread and they put uh, 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 fowl and, and, and meat in, 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 in place of God. They, they wanted to go back into Egypt. They put the leeks and the onions and the garlic and the foods they had in Egypt. They wanted to return to Egypt. They wanted to return to corruption rather than listen to the Lord God Almighty. Galatians 5, 19 and 21. Let's turn to Galatians 5, 19 and 21 and take a look at those scriptures. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. This is what the word says. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, don't confuse adultery with idolatry. Adultery is a form of idolatry because when a person commits adultery, a person is placing someone else instead of God and getting out of God's word. And instead of having sex with their own spouse, they're having sex with someone else. And that is placing someone else before God. It's a form of idolatry. Okay, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, rel revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do these do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You say, well, I did that once and I repented. Well, good, praise God. Don't do it again. But if you continue to practice these things, the Bible says that they that continue to practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Ladies and gentlemen, read uh, and reread Galatians 5, 19 through uh, 21. And then read 22 through 26 about the fruits of of the spirit and and the way God wants us to live these are works of the flesh idolatry witchcraft hatred yes hatred is idolatry ladies and gentlemen when you hate somebody because of their skin color you hate somebody because of their uh, uh, sexual persuasion you hate somebody because of their the way they wear their hair you hate somebody because of their language you hate somebody because of where they live that is idolatry that is placing uh 
uh, yourself above others and yourself above God because the word of God tells us to love your neighbor as yourself. And when you don't love your neighbor as yourself and you're hating on your neighbor, you are practicing idolatry. As we look at idolatry in the next couple of weeks, we're going to get a real clear definition. And uh, God's going to give many of us room to repent. And I pray that you repent. I repent of any time I've ever committed idolatry and, and, and any sin I've ever committed against God. Colossians 3 Five to seven. Let's turn to Colossians three, five and seven, and look at what that says. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. The Bible tells us to mortify our members which are upon the earth, <clears throat> I mean those members of our body that cause us to sin, you know, for a man, you know, that Johnson guy, that, that dude named Johnson, mortify Johnson, you've got to mortify Johnson to tell Johnson, no, you will not participate in idol worship, you will not participate in fornication, you will not participate in uncleanness, tell your mind, you will not and your heart, you will not participate in inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and, and tell your heart and your mind, no, you will not uh, participate in covetousness, which is idolatry. You will not participate in witchcraft. We've got to mortify our members. If your mind is causing you uh, to sin, if your eye is causing you to sin, if Johnson is causing you to sin, if your heart if the lust is causing you to sin, you have the responsibility, and I do too, to mortify. I'm telling it like it is. A lot of preachers won't tell this. Well, they're scared to preach this way. But the Bible says mortify your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Verse 6 of uh, Colossians 3, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Verse 7, in the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. Okay, so we, the Bible says we all have walked in these ways, but mortify these ways and put these ways to death. Verse 8, but now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, Filthy communication out of your mouth. Filthy communication. Those words, are, uh, uh, you know, you can practice idolatry by the words that come out of your mouth. We've got to put off these things. Anger, anger. <coughs> anger can be an idol. Wrath can be an idol. Malice, blasphemy. What's blasphemy? Talking about God, using God's name in vain, uh, denying the Holy Spirit. Filthy communication. Verse 9, lie not to one another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. So there are, there are Christians who still practice lies. There are Christians too who still lie. There are Christians who believe lies. We see this in the White House. There are Christian leaders who will do anything that this leader out of Washington, D.C. Uh, says to do, and they call themselves Christians. And, and a lot of these things, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of these things that we're told not to do by the Scripture, people are adhering to because they want the perks of supporting this person in office. And, and this thing is all over the political spectrum, ladies and gentlemen. There are Christians who are compromising the word of God uh, because they want to get the perks that come from uh, uh, honoring and being loyal to someone who is in position to bless them. Ladies and gentlemen, God is grieved. God is grieved, and it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse, and judgment is, is upon America, ladies and gentlemen. Judgment is upon America. Let's take a look at false teachers. 1 John 5, 21 says, Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Little children, meaning Christians, believers, followers of Jesus Christ, not churchgoers, 
but little children, the Greek word is technia, meaning little children, followers of Jesus, keep yourselves from idols. Don't follow after leaders who are not following Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care who that pastor is, who that prophet is, who that teacher is. If they're not following Christ, uh, and, and, and many, many preachers can deceive you, they have a, a, an air of religion. They know the flowery phrases. They know how to uh, uh, pump you up and, and then how to let the air out of you. You have the responsibility to choose to follow after godly leaders. The Bible tells us to flee idols and to not associate ourselves with those who are idol worshipers. Ladies and gentlemen, people in the church who are fornicators, adulterers, you're to cut yourself off from fellowship with them. We're not even to sit at the same table with them. If we know that they are no good, they're corrupt, and, and, and they, they're full of hatred. And here's one, racism. If you know that your friends are racist, why, you, why do you keep on hanging out with them? And I know you say, well, I figure if I hang out with them long enough, I'll change them. You're not going to change a racist. I asked a good friend of mine uh, recently, a well-known pastor known throughout this nation, and I asked him, I said, I said uh, when are white preachers going to preach against racism? Yes, Ryan, I asked that question. I said, when are white preachers going to preach against the evils of racism? And this well-known pastor, well-known throughout America, said, they're not going to. And I looked at him, and I wanted to ask him, uh, are you going to preach against racism? And I saw the look on his face, and I didn't go there because I know good and well he's not going to do it. Why are white preachers afraid to preach against racism? Why? Somebody tell me why. Uh, 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 I mean, I'm talking about people. Well, I mean, we've got many ministers all across the board. And then on the other side of the board, there are a lot of black preachers who are racist. They hate white folks. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not Christ-like. Racism is not Christ-like. Hatred is not Christ-like. But it bugs me. It bugs me to, to know the many people who are afraid to preach against racism. They're afraid they're going to lose their perks, lose their following, <coughs> lose their positions. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? God's going to hold a lot of preachers accountable and a lot of members accountable for uh, practicing hatred and racism. Hatred and racism. Oh, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Yes, and yes, there are many who love the Lord, but hate their neighbor. Hate their neighbor because their neighbor is Hispanic. Hate their neighbor because their neighbor is black. Hate their neighbor because their neighbor is poor. Hate their neighbors because their neighbor is unemployed. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> all of this is going to have to come out, and we've got to give an account of how we treat one another. I know this is good preaching, and I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but I'd rather challenge you right now with the word of God than to have you stand before God uh, at the judgment and, 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 and hear the Lord say to you, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Let's get these things cleared up right now. We There should be no idols in our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, these cars, these automobiles, I know people got three or four cars in their garages. You can't drive three or four cars at a time, and these cars are polished up. I got a friend down in Florida. I mean, he's got about, oh, maybe 10, 15 uh, uh, classic cars. You can't drive. They're idols. They're idolizing these things. There are people who idolize themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, now this is going to get a lot of you. Uh, it's going to get a lot of you. How many of you take selfies? How many of you take a lot of selfies? I mean, everywhere you go, you're taking a selfie. I see people at red lights in their cars. They're uh, women <clears throat> got their hand going through their hair, and they're taking a selfie with their hair. And most of them are wearing fake hair. It's fake hair, ladies and gentlemen. It's fake hair. And, but they're taking selfies. And you see all kinds of selfies on, on Facebook, all kinds of selfies. I mean, <laughs> selfies, I mean, it's all right to take your picture. Uh, if you're traveling somewhere, you want a picture to have a, 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 a remembrance of being at a certain place. But when every three minutes you've got to stop and take a selfie of yourself, that's 
idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. You're worshiping yourself. That's idolatry to keep putting pictures of your nails. Uh, you got your nails done and putting it on Facebook. That's idolatry. Your nails mean more to you than Jesus. Your hair means more to you than Jesus. Your makeup means more to you than Jesus. Your shoes, your closets full of shoes, closets full of uh, jewelry, closets full of dresses, closets full of clothing. It's, it's idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. And, and uh, uh, men do the same thing. They're men, they take pictures of themselves and you know, showing their abs. Your God is your abs. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to flee idolatry. The Bible says flee from idolatry. Flee from false teachers. Why did John close 1 John with these words, little children, keep yourselves from idols? Because all through his letter, he had been talking about false brethren, false prophets, seducers, deceivers, antichrists, those who say they love their brothers but actually hate them. And we've got a nation, a nation full of people who say they love their brothers and sisters but actually hate them. How many of them are willing to give up the perks, the, the uh, cars, the private jet planes? Uh, and how many, willing, how many of these well-known preachers are willing to sell those private jet planes and distribute that money among the poor? How many of them are willing to uh, 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 sell those limos <coughs> and distribute that money up among the poor? How many are willing to give up uh, uh, those, those, those TV programs and, 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 and the ties that people send to them uh, and to distribute that money among the poor. Very few, very few, ladies and gentlemen, very few. Ladies and gentlemen, some of the richest people in America are, are televangelists, TV evangelists uh, who have built up empires, ladies and gentlemen, empires. And then you get a poor ministry like this <coughs> of low budget. I'm talking about low, low, low budget, Brian, Ryan. Low budget ministry people. Uh, people don't want to hear uh, what we have to say, but they will follow those big name preachers. They will buy them new jets. There's a man in here in Atlanta. He wanted a new jet. He wanted a million dollars or more for a brand new jet uh, and and a new jet plane. Oh, and the old jet plane was just outdated. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've got pastors with two or three jet planes, personal planes, ladies and gentlemen, that money could be uh, sold, uh, spent, and given to the poor. <coughs> but yet uh, Americans are, are really big on supporting these idols. They are idols. I can preach the same thing so-and-so can preach on, on his or her program. And nobody wants to hear what I have to say, but you let so-and-so say it, and it's a revelation. Ah, uh -huh, it's a revelation, ladies and gentlemen. But don't be deceived. God is not mocked. You continue doing what you're doing, continue loving the Lord, continue being humble, and God will bless you. But flee from idols. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if your leader, if your, politic, if your religious leader is ungodly and corrupt, why do you keep hanging around that person? If you know that the church you're going to is corrupt and they're deceiving people and they're manipulating people and manipulating the money, why do you stay around there? Ladies and gentlemen, why do you keep uh, uh, edif edifying and lifting up <coughs> and building up the bishop? You know the bishop's corrupt. You know the bishop doesn't care about the people, yet you still honor and kiss up to the bishop. Well, 1 Thessalonians 1, 9, and 10 says, Ye turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven. In Thessalonia, they turn, the Christians turn from idols. They were idol worshipers just like the Corinthians. And Paul reminded them, You turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait from his, for his son from heaven. And I say to you, my friends, turn from your idols. Turn to the living God. Ladies and gentlemen, I know people mortgage the house to buy uh, uh, 
um, season tickets for Ohio State football. I know people who go into uh, extra debt to buy a season ticket to watch Texas A&M. I know people who go into debt to buy season tickets for the Atlanta Falcons. Yes, you can buy a season ticket and play and pay on the installment plan. Ladies and gentlemen, I know people who, who can barely pay their rent, their mortgage, but yet they invest in season tickets and uh, paraphernalia uh, to demonstrate that they follow a certain team. I know people who go into debt to buy shoes for their children so their children can be up to date with the latest so-called rock idol or, 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 or uh, superstar. Do you think God is pleased with this? No, 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 no. 1 Peter 4, 3 says, For the time past of our life, when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. You know that 40, <coughs> that Bud 40, that, that uh, 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 um, Coors, that 40, that can be an idol. That six-pack can be an idol. That bottle of wine, that Dos Equis, Equis, Dos, Dos Equis, whatever, however, the you know, beer they advertise on TV. It's an idol. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an idol. Uh, that car, that, 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 uh, uh, that, that, that pornography is an idol, ladies and gentlemen. Many Christians practice pornography, revelings, getting drunk. Drinking wine, and they justified by, well, the Bible says a little wine for thy stomach's sake. Yes, that was because Timothy had stomach problems. You don't have stomach problems. You got a head problem. You got a heart problem. This society encourages us to have personal idols from sports figures. Okay, okay. I I know I know a lot of people went out yesterday to watch Kaepernick uh, make his comeback, put on his uh, his demonstration of his. Does he still have it? Does he still have the ability? I, Kaepernick and many others, or or, or uh, uh, whoever they are, um, Ryan or whoever the quarterback is, Rogers. They're 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 idols to a lot of people. Ladies and gentlemen, flee from idolatry. Don't make idols out of people. Don't make idols out of your preacher. Don't make idols out of movie star, rock singers, sports figures, television figures. Israel couldn't wait 40 days for Moses to come down from Sinai. Remember when Moses went up on Sinai? Israel couldn't wait 40 days. The man went up to talk to God. He said, I'll be back. I'm going to bring you something back from God. They couldn't wait. They got impatient. They made Aaron make them a, a god, an idol, a golden calf. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 to 3. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I will not have you to be ignorant. You know that you are Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Paul reminds us meaning we're Gentiles, non-Jews. We were carried away by idols. Every one of us had idols in our life before we came to Christ. And then there are many who have accepted Christ and still hold on to those idols. Well, you know, a little, 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 a little, little drink in here and there. Then I got to smoke my reefer. Uh, I, I got to, let me, let me, let me do a little bit of vaping. A little bit of vaping won't hurt. Ladies and gentlemen, flee. Idolatry. Vaping is idolatry. Well, I gotta have a woman on the side. Flee idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, flee false religious leaders. Flee false religious leaders. Okay, we're gonna stop there. We're gonna stop there. We're you're just laying a little um, biblical foundation for idols and idol worship. We're gonna take a look in the next couple of weeks about the church. We're going to look at specific areas in which the church is practicing 
idolatry. And I pray that these messages will open your eyes and that you will uh, hear the word of God and read the word of God for yourself and let the Holy Spirit bring you under conviction. And, 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 and when God opens your eyes, just say, Lord, I repent. Lord, I didn't know I was doing that. Lord, I, I, or Lord, I knew I was doing that, but I didn't know it was a sin. Well, when you realize it's a sin, just repent. Ask God to forgive you. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I bless you. I honor you. I praise you. I worship you. You're wonderful. We worship you here at the online church. We thank you. Thank you for giving us space to repent. Thank you for the revelation of your word. Thank you, Father, for building us up in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Now, Lord, forgive us for practicing idolatry. Forgive us for letting other people and things take your place in our lives. We repent. Now, Lord, help us, God. Cleanse us. Forgive us of our sins. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and fill us with good things. Help us to keep our minds and hearts fixed on you, Lord God. And we bless you and honor you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Well, my friends, if any of you are convicted and you're listening and you're not saved and you want to give your heart to Jesus, we ask in Jesus' name today that you ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart and receive him by faith and put away idols. Make Jesus your Lord and Savior. When you receive Jesus Christ, you're supposed to put away idols. Everything else, nothing, nobody, nothing should take the place of Jesus Christ in your life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank those of you in other countries. I want to thank those of you who are in our school of ministry. We want to thank you. Share the word of God. Share the word of God. Pray for one another. Love one another. Pray for this nation. Pray for this government. Pray for a good, honest, Christ-centered government. Leaders who fear God. Pray for uh, uh, love in your family, in your household. Pray for healing and deliverance in Jesus' mighty name. Well, we're going to end our recording, but we'd like to ask you to stay on. Comments and let's chat and chew.